Welcome to the outdoor worship space here at St. Michael's and All Angels in Royal Oak. My name is Logan McManamy and I'm a retired bishop. I am very pleased to be able to take these services here at St. Michael's as donors on a time of rest, renewal and refreshment. We gather here today from different places across the country and across the world probably. But we always remember as we gather that we are one in Christ, united through Christ, even though we are dispersed in different places. In this ordinary time, that is also extraordinary time, we gather on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people and the Sarslip nation. We give thanks for them and for the journey we share. In this time of mourning, we are called to listen, to hear their stories, their laments, to celebrate their strength, their gifts and their resilience. We are called to witness their sorrow and to pray and work with them for the healing of the whole world. As we seek to know Jesus and to shape our lives by the Word of God, we understand God as something infinite and larger than all we could imagine. A love that comes close to us in all the seasons of life. We encounter Jesus as the one who invites us to lay down our burdens, to find rest for our weariness, and to begin again living into the encouragement and hope God offers. In our liturgical calendar, we are in ordinary time. And in the summer season, we share in the stories of God's prophets as they struggle, ponder, question, wrestle, and learn. And into that mix, we listen for the gospel and Jesus' invitation to bring us and our stories into his wonderful mix. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In this time and place, we gather on the ancestral territories of the Kwakwakiwak, New Charnath, and Coast Salish peoples. From many places and people, we come to this place in prayer. In this time and place, we gather in the name of the living God. We meet in the presence of Jesus Christ, risen and alive. In this time and place, we gather in a community of faith around the globe and across the ages. 
In this time and place, heaven and earth are one. In this time and place, we are not alone, but one in Christ, knit together in the unity of the Spirit. In this time and place, hallowed, expectant, one people in God, and in the name of the Holy and Blessed One, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us hold this moment open to the Spirit of God. Christ have mercy. God have mercy. Christ have mercy. So what's up with you today? I'm worried. You, you're worried about what? I'm, I'm really worried. I'm, I'm very, very worried. About who? Uh, I, I, him. You know him? Him? We follow him? I'm really troubled about him. What are you talking about? Jesus. What are you worried about Jesus? He's in trouble. Well, Jesus seems to be always in trouble. Every time we read the Bible, Jesus is in trouble. Yeah, but really in trouble today. Well, you know, he's with the religious people of his day. He was always causing trouble with the religious people of his day. It's more important than that. More important than the religious people of his day? The religious people of our day? More important than that. What do you mean more important than that? He'll be in trouble with Dr. Bonnie. Dr. Bonnie? Yeah, because he's not washing his hands. We're all supposed to wash our hands and it's getting worse and we need to wash our hands even more. Oh, you're thinking about the story today when the religious people get mad at Jesus for, and his disciples for not washing his hands. That's right. Well, that's a different thing. It's not really about washing your hands. What do you mean it's not about washing your hands? It's about rules. It's about rules. I like rules. Well, so did the religious people of Jesus' day. But they were too inflexible. They're too inflexible. And Jesus was saying to them, it's okay to wash your hands. It's important to wash your hands. But don't forget to love people and be kind to people and to be gentle people. He was saying to them, you're too rigid. You all, well, you know, a wee bit of flexibility is good. Yeah, you have to be like a tree. I like trees. I really like trees. We know you spend a lot of time with trees. And, and you know what? Donna likes trees and so does Elizabeth May. And I've seen them hugging trees and I like to hug trees. Well, let's not worry about the trees and hugging trees. But trees are a good example. Trees are rooted and they're firm, but they're also flexible. They move with the wind, they move. And if they didn't move, they would break. It's the same as religious people. If they are too inflexible, then they will break as well. And they might break other people. And that's what Jesus is saying. Don't break other people. I like that. Go ahead, wash your paws, and we'll get on with the rest of the day. But let's ask the guy behind us to pray. Okay, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have called us to be your disciples to be careful and loving, to live according to your commandments, but also to reach out beyond ourselves and take risks and love and welcome others. We pray these prayers in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.
living presence, wise and discerning, taking no account of appearances, but seeing deep into the human heart, bring to our awareness the evil intentions that so often lurk unnoticed. And before we have time to act on them, dissolve them in your goodness, that we may incline our hearts to serve your just and gentle rule. We pray this after the pattern of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Let us listen for the word of God. A reading from the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in the, at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide in your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. There is no guile upon their tongue. They do no evil to a friend. They do not heap contempt upon a neighbour. In their sight the wicked are rejected, but they honour those who fear the Lord. They have sworn to do no wrong and to do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the, plant the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. And then he called the crowd again, and he said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand this. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from within us and they defile a person. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Your word, Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Continue to give us guidance and direction as we seek to search and follow you in this, our generation. Amen. So, Luke and Duke were right to point out that Jesus is in trouble again. Jesus is in conflict. It's part seems to be part of an ongoing theme in the scriptures that Jesus is in conflict with the religious people. He either raises up the temperature or he lowers down the temperature, depending on how the conflict is going. In today's scripture, he raises the temperature and he raises the temperature in the worst possible way when he's dealing with these religious people because he quotes scripture at them. If you have a re rigid religious person, the worst thing to do is to quote scripture at them. And this just makes the whole situation even worse. But as Luke and Duke pointed out, this has nothing to do with the washing of your hands or in cleanliness. This is more to do with love, gentleness, flexibility, encouragement, reaching out beyond themselves. When I read this passage, what came to mind was the idea of refuge. Because some folk take refuge in rules, in organization, in institution. None of these are bad, but it's when they become inflexible that they shape your life, they shape the community, they shape your relationship with Jesus. And not that what Paul talks about in kindness, gentleness, or what other parts of scripture talk about, and that reaching out beyond yourself and taking risk and welcoming a place of refuge do we offer in our church, in our communities, in our own lives, a place of refuge? My oldest daughter points out to me that I was looking for a place of refuge a number of years ago when I first looked at coming to Canada. My grandparents and great-grandparents were looking for a place of refuge, refuge as they moved from Ireland in the highlands of Scotland to the Lower Clyde to find work, to find a place to live. And so as I left in the 70s to come here to, to Canada, it was again looking for refuge, a new place to live, a new place to start. I, of course, had a privileged position because many folk were coming from Canada in those days to recruit Scots and English people to come and work over here. 
and it was in some ways easy for me to move from my country to this country and settle down. And as Megan points out, in those days I too was an economic migrant and never to forget that I was an economic migrant in moving here. As we see these horrible scenes on television of folk in Afghanistan trying to escape, trying to find places of refuge in Europe, in America and here in Canada, we, our hearts go out and there's a pain there as we wonder will they ever find a place of refuge, a country that has been war torn for generations. Their own country is not a place of refuge for them. Their own homes is not a place of refuge. What do we do? How do we become a place of refuge for others? I believe that it begins long before we get to this stage and we have to really look at how we deal with conflict and how we deal in situations and not to be trapped and not to be suckered in to violence and to war. If we are peaceful people looking for peace in the world and offering that place of security, of safety, before we use violence, because as Martin Luther King Jr. said, violence begets violence and we end up in that cycle that doesn't seem to be ever able to be stopped. There is the words on that on the statue that sits in New York, New York Harbour that says, give me your tired and your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Who are those in our neighbourhood? Who are those in our family? Who are those in our community? Who are those in our world who are yearning to breathe free again? Think about that, to breathe free. What a wonderful statement, allowing people to breathe free because we know and we realise when there is trauma, when trauma occurs, when violence occurs, what we do is we hold our breath. And as we hold our breath, we are not in a heavy relationship with ourselves or with our environment. And just to breathe again, just to release inside of ourselves that breath of freedom. So the, I believe that we are called to look at our relationship with Jesus, our relationship with God, and make sure that that is not one based on rigidity, but one that is opened in relationship to all people. Chris Abani, a Nigerian writer, tells a story of his own community. He tells a story of the Igbo community. He says, in the Igbo community, there is a tradition that if the community need a God, they will go and they will speak to the priest. And the priest will get a, a relic or something that is symbolic of this a God. And they will build an altar to that God. And the people will come and they will worship that God and will give offerings to that God. But if that God becomes unruly, if that God asks for human sacrifice, then the people will gather together and dismantle that God and, and push that God out of their lives and out of their, their village. Friends, we have to ask the question, have we created gods? And what are the gods that we create? Is the God that we create one who offers refuge, one who offers new life, one who offers gentleness, one who offers peace? Or is that God one who calls for human sacrifice, whatever shape or form that may be in, one that calls for violence, one that calls to disrupt people? We need to, we need to dismantle that God and look for gods that shape and form us in the likeness of Jesus, that one that reaches out to orphans and widows, to those who are seeking refuge and offer welcome. Where do you find refuge? In your week, in your day, in your house, in your family, in your home. That refuge renews and restores you. Friends, during this coming week, Realize the places that you find refuge and commit, let us commit ourselves to be in a place of refuge for all people. Join with me in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the freshness of this day, for the renewing of this rain that's falling upon us and upon your creation. Help us to offer refreshment, renewal and refuge to those in our families, in our neighbourhoods, in our country and in our world. 
who are finding it difficult to breathe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty, where fear and courage join hands, conflict and care link arms, and the sun rises over the barbed wire. We believe in a with us God, who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We are for a faith that takes us beyond a safe place, into action, into vulnerability, and onto the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation. To stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Please join us as we pray. God of love, whose Son encouraged us to pray, we pray for ourselves and for the world in which we live, a world in turmoil, yet a world which you created and which you still love. God of love, we pray for the people of Afghanistan now living at a time of increasing hatred and violence and who face an uncertain and frightening future. And we ask your pr protection for all who are seeking to leave that country and to find refuge in other lands. We pray for all victims of warfare and oppression and hatred for all refugees and those for whom life seems to have no meaning. We thank you for those who are seeking to help and, and protect people in their times of distress, and those who have dedicated their lives to serve others as they work for peace and justice and reconciliation. And we pray for their safety and for the success of their efforts. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, the author of peace and lover of concord, whose Son graced us with his peace, we pray for a world in which peace seems increasingly hard to find. In your mercy, help us to find peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, and peace in the world, so that the day may come when war will be no more, and the whole world may be filled with the blessings of your love. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you created us in your own image, and in your sight all are equal, all are loved. We pray for all those who have suffered and still suffer from the evils of discrimination and unjust divisions. Grant us the will and the determination to combat discrimination in all its forms and to find ways to live together in peace and harmony, despite our differences of race, religion and politics, not just by our words, but especially by our actions. God of love in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We thank you that we are members of the Church, the Body of Christ, and we pray for those who are our leaders. Linda, our Primate, Mark, Primate of our National Indigenous Church, Lynn, our Metropolitan, Anna, our Bishop, and to Donna, our Priest. We pray for the Congregation of St. Colombo in Tofino, and for the Diocese of the Yukon and Bishop Leslie. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan and for Justin, Archbishop of Mandy. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, in these days of uncertainty, and as we seek for ways to live in harmony with each other and with our environment, 
We pray for all those whose leadership and decisions affect us all. Especially we pray for the Queen, the Governor-General, the Prime Minister, the Premiers and all our local authorities. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, helper of the helpless and healer of the sick, we pray for all who look to you for healing of mind or body and for strength in times of weakness, for all who mourn the loss of loved ones, for all who need your special grace, especially those known to each of us. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer you our grateful thanks for all the blessings we receive from your hands, for the wonders and beauty of your creation, for the gifts of grace and for the hope of glory, and for all that gives meaning to our lives. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayers which we bring to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the way of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of the God who created you, the Son who has befriended you, and the Spirit who has gifted you be upon you this day and always. Amen.